Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway, and we are here for a transfer portal update regarding K-State basketball. One regarding K-State football will be on the way for you tomorrow, so we'll be able to kind of cover everything uh, in both sports with the transfer portal still open in both of them. Basketball, though, first up on the docket. There's only a handful of days left uh, in the portal. Uh, for it to be open so guys can still commit afterwards but if you want to go in your deadline is may 1st and we're a little over a week away from that things seem to be trending well for k-state in terms of what they're looking for and i think the commodities that they want are already in the portal i think we're nearing the tail end of guys entering that you'd go oh that's a name that k-state should be after we have one major development, though, and this is we talked last week about, hey, Brendan Housen is coming to Manhattan. This is a very good target for the Wildcats because he kind of fits what they need. They didn't have shooters last season. He would fit the bill as that. I think K-State would get him some great looks. So we thought, all right, that's good news. But we also talked about Clifford Amore, the top 10 big from Rutgers that seemed like things were starting to slip away. Well, not so fast because – Things seem to be trending back in a good direction because Clifford Amore is going to be on campus Wednesday taking a visit to K-State. He'll follow it up with going to Alabama over the weekend. So it seems like at the moment, K-State, Alabama, and Georgetown, who he visited this past weekend, are the teams in the mix at this point in time. Why do you think the change of heart for Clifford Amore and uh, how significant is this that the Cats are still in on a really talented big? I... I don't know necessarily if this is like a major change of heart uh, from Clifford Amore to visit K-State because I think that there was still a, a chance, albeit a smaller one, last week that he was still planning on visiting K-State, but we just didn't really know anything about it. So you kind of get to this point where it's a midweek visit, which, I mean... There's no like real differentiation between midweek and the weekend. As long as you get them on campus, that's good. And the hit rate, especially this year with K State staff, of when they get them on campus and then closing the deal has been really, really high. Uh, the only one that has gone somewhere else was Terrace Reed, who went, ended up going to UConn. So, I mean, there's no real fault in that. And that's one that it seemed like K-State, they were yeah. not going all the way in on yet. That was like a, yes. a back burner breaking case of emergency options. So that, I mean, and people might laugh, but I, that's truly what it was. K-State didn't see the need to be aggressive for Reed at this point in time. And I don't think that they're beat up if he's going to end up at UConn, which he did. Yeah. So, I mean, you get that to go with it. And it, it's a visit that if you aren't excited about the potential of uh, or not even the potential. If you're not excited about the visit, like I, I don't really understand what what you get excited about because this is all you really could ask for is a shot, and they're getting their shot against some heavy hitters. I mean, uh, a visit to North Carolina UCLA isn't necessarily out of the question right now for Clifford Amore. Alabama is a heavy hitter, not just with uh, their basketball program right now and how it's trending, but also in the NIL world. And Georgetown, although they have had a ton of success in recent years, they're they're also not afraid to spend a lot of money. And especially when basketball is the only thing that they really have going for them in general, they're, they're going to be a heavy hitter in the NIL world. And I think that Georgetown will be turning in a positive direction soon. So, I mean, these are some big-time programs going after Clifford Amore. And we saw this top 12 in K-State being one of three schools to get a visit is a significant thing. Yeah, this is a big deal. This is trending in the right direction for him. I don't think it's some kind of earth-shattering move, though, because we talked about landing guys when they get to campus. We'll see how this goes for K-State. I, at this stage, I don't know that anybody would feel comfortable calling themselves the front runner. Uh, maybe the, the loaded Georgetown fans would throw themselves in that category, I guess, but I've seen enough from K-State and Alabama people the last couple of days that Neither of them know what the heck's going on here or where their confidence level stands, but this is good news that K-State is still in the mix for this one. And in addition to Amori, who is going to be in town this week, 
We also know that K-State has some other guys lined up that they're either actively trying to land uh, because they've already had them in town or they might be lining something up. Here's a look at the overall transfer tracker for the Cats. You see the two additions they already have, Doug McDaniel and C.J. Jones. They lost Cam Carter. He's off to LSU. Dorian Finister is headed to Sam Houston State, and Jarrell Colbert's still floating out there for anybody that wants to pluck him. Uh, the targets, though, we talked about Clifford Amore. Brendan Housen was in town over the weekend. Baba Miller has already visited from Florida State. But one of the new names to keep an eye on is Khalif Battle from Arkansas, a top 60 player in the portal, really talented, has played in a handful of different places. There may be things outside of basketball that you go, do you want him, do you not? But there's a lot of talent here, and I think what we've seen over the last handful of seasons is that um, Jerome Tang obviously is is going to have faith in guys that he brings in, and he's going to give them a chance and think that this staff can do good by them. Uh, so Khalif Battle might be the most interesting name on that list currently, and uh, I'll let you kind of go from there, Drew. Yeah, uh, I'll start with the the two guys that have already visited. I mean, we, we talked about Brendan Howells, and I think that he is probably, who boy, I don't want to say like the most ideal out of all of the transfers that they've had come in with his fit, but the way that he would fit, he would really open up K-State's offense. I mean, we, we talked about that extensively Friday about how his shooting is just so valuable that even though he hasn't had a ton of production and numbers outside of being able to shoot the three, he has a, he has a long, a long list of suitors that are coming after him because they know how valuable it is to have somebody that could come in and shoot 38, 39% from three. And I think that his numbers would only get better at a place like K state, UConn. I believe Georgetown is also involved for him. So you get, you would get uh, probably better shots because the offense is just better and you get any have better coaching than I think that he had at Villanova. So you got more open looks and he's proven that when he gets open looks that he can knock them down. Baba Miller, I think is like the most ideal fit that um, anybody has had with uh, K state in regards to the transfer portal so far. And that even includes Doug McDaniel, because I think that they want a bigger wing that can play the four that can really stretch the floor. And I think that Baba Miller is that ideal person where he's an NBA caliber guy. And I think that coming at K-State, he would only get better. And again, he would just get better open looks and more shots that he's comfortable with taking. And, and I think that he could raise his three-point shooting because I believe he was 29% last season at Florida State. And if he gets to that 32 33% range, that's all K-State really needs him to do to really take that next jump, I think. And I think that part of it is taking the right threes because he shoots 40% from the corner. So you get corner threes, and I think that you see the percentage go up even more. And you have somebody like Brendan Housen, and you already, had Doug, you already have Doug McDaniel, and you already have C.J. Jones, you already have Dade Ames, who have all proven that they can shoot at least a little bit. I think that it, it means that Baba Miller would get open more and be able to knock more open looks down. Cleef Battle is an interesting name for me because he can really fill it up. And you'd probably still need a little bit of scoring. And as much as I really like the other guys that they've brought in, you still have to be able to have somebody that can go get you a bucket. That's probably not Doug McDaniel. And I think that Khalif Battle would be that kind of guy and be, fill that kind of role because you have two really good playmakers with McDaniel and, and Ames. And I mean, and I'd even a third in CJ Jones, but you need somebody that can consistently get you buckets. And, and I think that that would be what Khalif battle probably brings to the table the most. Yeah. The, it's going to be interesting with battle and Miller because we don't know a ton about where things stand and, and how people are tracking them right now. Like, where are they looking at? We know that Miller has been to K-State. We don't know much else about the recruitment. We know that Kentucky had reached out at one point, but there was the weird distinction made there that, like, well, it wasn't Mark Pope that did it. It was an assistant. So what whatever that means, why that needed to be right. distinguished, not just, hey, Kentucky had reached out. I don't know. Maybe it's a qualifier for if Kentucky doesn't get him. They're like, well, we didn't really want him that bad because Mark Pope didn't talk to him. He was busy 
taking guys to and from the airport and hugging them there with his wife. Um, he is the first coach to ever do that yeah. in the history of coaching. <laughs> I mean, and then the reaction after the fact of the Kentucky side to get mad when everybody was like, uh, well, actually, this coach does it and this coach does it. And then, uh, of course, Matt Jones from Kentucky Sports Radio had to make it about Jerome Tang uh, because mm-hmm. Kentucky fans, I think they despise K-State more than anybody outside of the SEC right now um, because, I mean, boy, that was the most losery group of people that uh, I was around after the the NCAA tournament last year with the way they handled it. Um, as they all waltzed around in their, you know, their like Kentucky booster jackets around there. Um, I also refuse to believe that uh, Calipari didn't do the same thing. I could believe it with Cal. I could see Cal being like, I'm greater than you. I'm, you know, the all and powerful. I'll have my servants do it for me. But uh, it, you know, that is what it is. But those two guys, we'll just kind of have to see what happens. With Amori and Housen, it seems like, hey, there are just, a, a legit known grouping of teams. K State is in the thick of it with both. And I would venture to say that for Housen, they would appear to be the front runner in this thing. They're the one that seems to have the most momentum. I think if UConn put on a strong push, then they would be a legitimate threat there. But I think for UConn, Housen would seem like the kind of guy that would be like a luxury ad and a we're not going to force the issue right now. Almost similar to what K State was with Reed who ended up going to UConn. Totally different positions, but just that same style of transfer portal recruiting is how I see it. Yeah, honestly, I would agree with that. I mean, uh, and I still stand by what I said before, that KZ will get one of the best portal classes in the country. Uh, But especially you add Clifford Amore and Khalif Battle to what they they already had, and you really get excited. And then that doesn't even add uh, Baba Miller or Brendan Housen yet. So if K-State can get the players that they want, I still firmly believe that this will be one of the best portal classes in the country. And I think it's something that everybody should be excited about. I mean, this is a top 10 transfer, one of the best defensive uh, big men in all of college basketball last year, probably the best returning uh, big in college basketball this season. And he, if you watch his highlights, I mean, it, it's an impressive display. He's super athletic, can really jump, can really move. He does all the things that K-State wants to do out of the five spot. And I think that that alone gets you excited because the five spot has been kind of a weak spot a little bit for K-State in the two years under Jerome Tang, and, and, and at least in terms of being able to score the ball and do it at – a semi-efficient rate. Amore, not a great offensive player, but I think that with the tools around him, all they really want the five to do is catch lobs and get rebounds. And Amore is great at both. Yeah, that's a good point on on that front, where the offensive side, I if, depending on what you surround him with, you're going to give the opportunity to open up the game, make it easier for him offensively. And like this past season was not a good Rutgers team. So it's, you know, it's tough to decide there. Like Rutgers, Steve Peichel was like, yeah, you know, like we we did well the year prior. We were kind of building things, but I'm just looking forward to the 24-25 season when I get all these top recruits in here. Um, so, I, I look, I think Amori would be a great ad for K-State. Um, at the end of the day, though, I think if you get Amori – you're going to want one or two of these other pieces for sure to make it feel like you've really rounded out the roster because I think Amori serves a need. Obviously, he's well thought of being the number seven player in the portal, highly sought after as well. But that would not, in my eyes, change much of the way that I view what K-State can do next season. I think if you bring in a guy like Housen or Battle or Miller – uh, that adds another element to what you could do offensively. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we know that's what you need to do because K-State was solid defensively last season. It didn't do a whole lot for them. They lost in the first round of the NIT, and they got handily beaten by a team that's all about offense in Iowa during that game, and the offense struggled at times. So if you can get a more, that is awesome. That is a great get for K-State. That is a difference maker. But how big of a difference maker? I think it depends on what comes after that. So I think you'd like to see of the names we just showed there, 
K-State to land at least two of those guys, and that's a tall ask. Like Those are some big, big names in the portal, but I think you would hope for that. And we also know a name to mention is Nick Pringle, an Alabama transfer, also a four-star portal guy that uh, would probably be a good secondary option if you're not able to get Amore or Miller. Or, you know, even if you don't get Amore and you do get Miller, you probably still want Pringle. So they have op- more options kind of loaded up and ready to go. But they have, I think, a pretty refined four right now that there seems to be enough smoke on that, hey, these are the guys that are going to try and work. And if they can get these four, perfect. If not, they'll uh, take what they get and start going down the list and trying to fill out the roster that way. Um, I already feel like, though, K-State has a more competitive team this coming season with what's currently in Manhattan versus what they had last year. Yeah, I would agree. And I think it kind of goes back to what I said uh, on Friday that I just think that the roster has more of a fit to what K-State wants to do right now than it did last year. It just everything seemed a little bit off during the season about uh, what guys roles were and it it just, the pieces didn't really mesh as well as I think that they do now because they have some complimentary pieces now that I think that they really needed last year. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. All right. Well, that will do it for us today. That's your update on basketball. We'll have the football portal update coming for you tomorrow. So if you want more on K-State online, head over to On3, find everything we have there with football, basketball, uh, because it's not just uh, portal stuff going on. There's still plenty of other things with team news and notes, uh, possibly some big football news on the horizon as well. So stay tuned for all that. K-State online is your home for it. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching this edition of the KSO Show.